Transparency. It's a key concept in both public governance and private governance. It simply means, as the word suggests, that people can see from outside into the workings of an organisation and get a sense of what's going on there. And therefore, they can hold the managers of any organisation, public or private, to account. Uh, effectively, it underpins accountability. And we'll see too that also helps uh, efficiency, that if there is the timely sharing of information, it provides greater confidence for people to deal with companies, whether they're investors or employees or government regulators, suppliers to the company of a whole range of business inputs. Everyone will have simply more confidence in dealing with a company or any kind of public entity if there is greater transparency. And we've seen that companies increasingly want to send messages about the value of transparency, um, even in our architectural forms. Uh, we see this with uh, the public sector as well too. Now there are a bunch of other reasons, including technological shifts and architectural fashions and whatnot, but more and more, our leading organisations put themselves literally in glass boxes, in glass towers, uh, where we at least get some semblance viewed from outside of people at work. Now, historically, this wasn't the case. If you look at 19th century banks and, of course, government buildings, historically they were built out of stone. The materiality of the buildings, the spaces in which these organisations inhabited, said we are strong, we are well defended, we are robust, um, and we also really don't care if you can't see in. We're looking out, we're seeing you, but you can't see in. And this has actually arisen in some contexts when companies and sometimes even nations have had to rebuild their headquarters. Very significantly after the reunification of Germany and when the former capital of uh, West Germany, uh, which was in Bonn, was then moved to Berlin with the reunification. Berlin, of course, had a very dark history uh, with the Nazi period in particular. So there was a very big debate about what uh, built form would be appropriate to symbolise the new liberal democratic open Germany. And so there were very conscious decisions made to build in glass. We see that many public buildings were, were built uh, in strikingly transparent way, and even a symbolic building such as the Reichstag, uh, the, uh, the former parliament of Imperial Germany, which was then burnt in the lead up to World War II, had a glass dome put on the top of it and people could walk to the top and they could look down inside the building. The first slide in this set of presentation materials that I've got here for you uh, has a picture of the Aix-en-Provence railway station, the TVG, uh, TGV train station. I very deliberately picked that picture because it is completely made of glass, a uh, quintessential example of transparency, although that's not about accountability. That the, uh, the reason for the train station there in Aix-en-Provence being all made of glass is because Aix-en-Provence is uh, where Cézanne, the very famous Impressionist painter, had his studio and worked for much of his life. And uh, near the town, you can see Mont Saint-Victoire, the, uh, the very famous mountain that he painted repeatedly, so that when you actually arrive and get off the train, uh, you can see uh, a very Cézanne-like view of the mountain and the, uh, the town in the distant and whatnot. So in general, this transparency uh, is something that's increasingly manifested in built form, but also so is a key concept in the way organizations present themselves uh, in terms of their communications. And of course, the built environment is part of communications, but how these organizations communicate to the world at large and their stakeholders in particular.